Hello, my name is Gareth Lima. I'm a retina surgeon at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary of Mount Sinai and Director of Quality, Safety, and Experience for the Department of Ophthalmology at Mount Sinai. I wanted to answer a few questions that have been coming up uh, among patients regarding the coronavirus and how it affects the eyes, as well as things they can do to prevent transmission of the virus through the eyes. So one thing I'm often asked is, how is the, how is the virus spread? And this is something that patients are asking all their doctors right now. Uh, it's basically spread the same way that the flu or a cold is spread. Hand-to-hand um, -hand contact, personal contact, and then touching your face. Um, it's spread on droplets, so virus particles can spray from the mouth um, in droplets when somebody coughs or sneezes and land on surfaces in your home or office or anywhere else in public. Um, if you then touch something that has viral particles on it and rub your face, uh, then it can lead to transmission of the virus. Um, you know, a lot of people think that they don't touch their face very often. I would tell you that you should try taking an hour and just sort of see how much you think about whether or not you want to touch your face or how much of the urge to touch your face. I did try doing this myself recently and I got itchy within about 30 minutes, 30 seconds. It really is hard and I think you don't really realize how much you have that sort of urge to scratch something or touch your eyes or your brow or your forehead or, or, or rub your nose or things like that. Um, when we're challenged to try to, to not do it, it's much, much more difficult than we think. In terms of how the virus is transmitted through the eyes, um, we know that the virus is transmitted in, it is uh, present in tears. There are viral particles in, in the tears, uh, but the rate of conjunctivitis is very, very low. Uh, in one study of a number of, of COVID patients, they found conjunctivitis in only about 0.8%. Uh, what this means is that even though it's not commonly causing eye infections, if it's present in the tears um, and someone wipes their eyes or something like that and then transmits the virus the same way as if they sneezed on a door handle or, or um, a, um, a handle in the subway or something like that. Um, it's most likely transmitted by getting into the tears when you rub your eyes. Uh, the tears then drain down the tear ducts and get into the nose and mouth. Uh, and cause infection uh, in a more typical manner. One question that comes up is, what's gonna happen to my eye appointment? Uh, at New York Eye and Ear in Mount Sinai, we are still seeing patients. Uh, we are only, we've had to centralize uh, the, the care that we provide, and we're only seeing patients on an urgent and emergent basis, uh, but we are still open if you have an eye problem. We would encourage you to call ahead so that we can determine the best site for you to be seen and the best time so you can see the right person. Uh, there is a walk-in clinic at New York Eye and Ear that is open at this point. Uh, however, given the nature of the virus to change our plans very, very quickly, please call ahead because the hours of operation might be a little variable or not what they usually are. One important note, uh, when you call, make sure you notify us if you have cough, fever, runny nose, or any other symptoms that might indicate that uh, you have an active COVID-19 infection so that we can direct you to proper services to make sure that that is not a risk um, of you traveling uh, for your eye appointment. I get some more specific questions from patients in high risk groups, uh, especially those over 60, 70, 80. Um, one of the issues with this illness is that it can be extremely severe and, and cause a high rate of complications um, uh, for seniors and, and uh, patients in those age ranges. Um, at the same time, there are many, many patients in their 70s and 80s who need injections on a regular basis. Uh, as a retina surgeon, I'm someone who does do injections of medicines right into the eye, um, and sometimes we need to have patients come back on a monthly basis, and it's not appropriate to, to change that treatment course. Um, the advice that I would give for that, uh, first, stay at home if you can, uh, because you're more at high risk um, for complications of this virus. Uh, it is very, very important that you heed those warnings um, for social distancing, um, social isolation until we have a better handle on how to treat the virus. Um, if you do need injections uh, regularly, talk to your retina specialist about what they're, you know, how often you need to have them done. If there are any strategies to, that you can use to uh, maybe increase the duration between the injections or the interval between the, the injections. If you can drive yourself or have someone who you know is low risk for getting the virus or carrying the virus, have them drive you and only have one other, that other person in the car. Um, you know, as we know, it's a higher risk to take public transportation and things like that. So you may want to be careful if you're, if you're out in public. 
and just practice impeccable hand hygiene uh, while out of the house. Uh, bring hand sanitizer with you can. Make sure you wash your hands frequently. Um, it is it is a tough balance uh, at this stage because uh, social distancing and not coming to inappropriate appointments really will save lives, but at the same time, there are uh, some issues and some ongoing management that needs to be done throughout the crisis. So one question that, we, that comes up is, if I'm taking eye medications, how do I safely put them in my eyes without touching my eyes? Um, I can show you how to do that with some artificial tears. Uh, first, remember to wash your hands because you're gonna have to touch your face. Because we're on a video, I brought some gloves here that I'll put on before I start giving the drops. These are just artificial tears. I tend to get preservative free, so they're in a, in a single use vial, but the, the method is the same. And what I typically do, I'll show you with both eyes, because um, I tend to keep it in my right hand, but if you're left-handed, the same thing will work. I use my other hand to hold down my lower lid, so it makes a little pocket there. I turn my head back like this, and then I try to support, what you'll see is I'm supporting my, the hand with the dropper on top of my other hand so that it's not moving around a lot and shaking. And I tend to support it either on my hand or on my nose or somewhere else. You can use your pinky, you can use other things to do that. So. And you just need one drop. The eye only holds about half a drop. So it's, it's, it's not, you don't need to put two drops in to make sure it gets there. And then for the other side, it's the same thing, but instead my hand's more resting on my nose. And that's it. If you have trouble putting your head back like that, you can lie in bed and have so, or have somebody else try to administer the drops for you. But the easiest way to go about it is to make that little pocket with your with one hand and put the drop into that little pocket in the lower lid and then blink a few times, it distributes the drop over the eye. Another group of patients with special considerations are those who need to use eye drops frequently. Uh, if you do have drops that you take for something like glaucoma or or uveitis or another issue that's, that's chronic, uh, it may be advisable to have about a three month supply. Uh, this does two things. One, it prevents you from running out while you go through the crisis, but also uh, it will prevent you from having to go back to the pharmacy to get refills over the next two or three months, uh, which can obviously limit your exposure to the virus. So one other special group are those who need contact lenses. Uh, if you can avoid wearing contacts, that would be our recommendation. Uh, putting contact lenses in and taking them out requires touching your face quite a lot. Uh, and so if you can wear glasses while we get through this crisis, that will be the best thing to do. If you do need contacts for optimal vision, and there definitely is a subset of patients who do, uh, then really follow the recommendations we've been giving throughout the rest of this discussion. Uh, wash your hands and face before or putting in or taking out your contacts, uh, never sleep in your contacts, and really avoid wearing them for, for prolonged periods of time. Uh, over time, they can get irritating, uh, cause um, irritation and eye rubbing, and if that's the case, that may increase your risk of transmission of the virus through the eyes. Another thing that's very important right now is screen time. Uh, kids are using uh, personal devices like tablets and cell phones and things like that to pass the time, but also for school. I actually have a daughter myself and that because she's home, we're learning how to homeschool her based on the advice of our, te of our uh, teachers from the school. This does require a lot of computer work and things like that. Uh, so how can we monitor for eye strain and prevent eye strain? Uh, the most, basically when we're using a computer screen, we might be sitting kind of close and so we're focusing very much um, using our near vision and that can cause some, uh, a little bit of eye strain. Uh, we also don't blink very much. Uh, whenever we're reading, watching TV, using a computer or driving, we don't blink so much and our eyes can dry out. So you can get things like tearing, uh, a dry eye feeling or a feeling like something's in your eyes general irritation, uh, or even a headache if you're, if you're straining for too long. Um, some ways to prevent this, uh, some of the typical ways we've always done, you know, make sure that you're limiting screen time a little bit, maybe to one or two hour blocks. Uh, make sure that every 20 minutes or so, you're looking up from the screen and refocusing your eyes at distance for about 20 seconds, uh, using artificial tears before uh, using a cell phone or computer or watching TV can also be beneficial.
And then last but not least, if you're home a lot with your family, have some family time and don't spend so much time on, on the computer or, or, uh, or using your cell phones. This is a great opportunity for families to reconnect and for people to, uh, to get in touch with their kids and loved ones. Um, finally, I just like to share some take home points. Remember to wash your hands a lot. Uh, practice excellent hand hygiene. Um, practice social distancing. Avoid touching, rubbing your nose, mouth, and eyes because uh, this is the way the virus is transmitted. Thank you very much for joining me today for this conversation on Facebook. I want to encourage you to be well, uh, stay safe, and protect your eyes. Thank you very much.